Okay, let's take a look at a parabola, a quadratic function given to us in standard form. So I've gone ahead and listed out what standard form looks like, a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. And let's figure out the vertex, x-intercepts, y-intercept, and whether it opens up or down. All right, so the first thing to notice is a is going to be negative 3, as you just kind of line things up with the formula. So a is negative. That tells us that this parabola opens down. In fact, let's go through what transformations have been applied to our standard x squared graph. All right, the negative out in front is a vertical reflection. The 3 out in front is going to stand for a um, vertical stretch. Neither one of these has anything to do with the vertex, though. All right, they do affect some other things about this graph. It's going to be like taller and skinnier and flipped upside down, but it doesn't have anything to do with the vertex and where it lands. Where that comes into play is that plus 6 that's attached inside the parentheses directly to x. Whenever a number is attached directly to x, it's going to be a left or right, a horizontal movement. Now in this case, because it's been added, it kind of does the opposite of what you think it should. This actually moves everything to the left, 6 units. And then finally, at the end, we have that plus 15. Well, when you add or subtract a number to the entire function, it's going to be a vertical movement. Now, in this case, this is going to be a vertical movement in the upward direction. All right, so when we think about our vertex, you could just line up the formula and pick out h and k. But I like to think about it. Our vertex didn't get affected by the negative 3, but it has been moved from the origin, 0, 0, to the left 6 and up 15. So that's going to put it as left 6 would be at negative 6 for an x value, and up 15 is going to be positive 15 for the y value. You could also visualize this as x minus a negative 6, quantity squared, plus 15. I'll bring along that negative 3 out in front. Just kind of line it up with the formula where h and k are with the correct signs. All right, next, the x-intercept. This one's a little bit more challenging than some of the other versions of the same type of problem. By that, I mean we're going to solve it a little bit different way. Instead of multiplying it all out and using the quadratic formula or doing factoring, what I'm going to do is I know that all x-intercepts occur when y equals 0. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in 0 where our y is. So we have negative 3, x plus 6 quantity squared plus 15. Just put a 0 in on the left-hand side. Now to solve this, what I want to do is I want to isolate the parentheses that are raised to the second power. We can make this into a power equation. So to do that, I need to get rid of both the negative 3 and the 15. I'm going to move the 15 to the other side first by subtracting 15 from both sides. So 0 minus 15 makes negative 15 equals negative 3 times the quantity x plus 6 squared. All right, next I want to get rid of the negative 3. Remember, I want to isolate that quantity raised to the second power. So we're going to divide both sides by negative 3. That'll put us with 5 equals x plus 6 quantity raised to the second power. All right, from here we call this a power equation because one side's all raised to an exponent, and we have a constant on the other side. So to eliminate that square, we're going to apply a square root to both sides. But because we applied the square root to both sides, we also need to include a positive and negative case over there on the constant side. So now we have plus or minus the square root of 5 equals, remember we applied the square root to cancel out the square, x plus 6 on the right-hand side. To isolate x, to get it all by itself, we want to subtract 6 from both sides. So our solutions here, we're going to have x equals a negative square root of 5, with a minus 6 not under the square root. And be sure if you're typing this into online homework that minus 6 is not under the square root with the 5. And then a positive case, positive 5, minus 6. Again, the minus 6 is not under the square root with the 5. And those are our two x values for x-intercepts. Now as ordered pairs, you could write these as negative square root of 5 minus 6 comma 0 for our y value and positive square root of 5 minus 6 comma 0 for our y value. Last thing we need to find is the y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept is always going to occur whenever x equals 0. 
So what I'm going to do is go ahead and replace the x on the right hand side of the original function with 0. So that's going to make y equals negative 3 times 0 plus 6 quantity squared plus 15. From here we have a little bit of solving down to do. I'm going to work the operations, order of operations inside the parentheses first. 0 plus 6 makes 6 squared plus 15 which is going to be negative 3 exponent comes next so we'll get 36 plus 15 here then we'll multiply before we add so negative 3 times 36 makes negative 108 plus 15 which turns out being negative 93 so as an ordered pair that's going to be 0 comma negative 93 for our y-intercept where we cross the y-axis all right, hope this helps out as you're working on parabolas that come in the standard form. Um, understanding transformations is very helpful as far as locating a vertex if it is given to you in the standard form. All right, good luck.